I'm Marie Miliore and I welcome you to my channel. Today we're talking about the whole, my spring and not so spring perfumes. The next one that I think I hold once and then put away for, for the spring times is Mon Guerlain Eau de Toilette Bloom of Rose. I got myself a set and started using the the travel one. I just wanted to like get back to you on that. So I'm not a big fan of Mon Guerlain. Uh, I think this is very unfortunate uh, combination of sickly, cloyingly, it's like obesity in the bottle, this sugar base that is in Poison Girl, that is in Mo uh, Mon Guerlain and a lot of other designer perfumes these days. It's sort of like La Vie Belle with the different additions. And when they mixed it with lavender, somehow it made that lavender so disgustingly cloying for me personally that I, as much as I love lavender as a note, I just could not wear it at all. So when I heard about the Bloom of Rose flanker, uh, a lot of people said that it has almost nothing to do with the original Mon Guerlain and I took it as a positive sign <laughs> and got it. It was available for a really good discount, so I decided to get myself a set. So this is basically a new never used bottle and I was working on my um, travel spray, just making sure that do I love it enough to keep the bottle. And since we're talking about spring perfumes and I think this one falls well in line, especially with this one, with Rosa Pop by the same brand. I wanted to touch base with you on that. So Mon Guerlain Bloom of Rose, it's indeed a case when they took a lot of the liquid sugar, this like sticky sugary base, they took a lot of that out. They completely removed the lavender, in case you actually don't like lavender, this one I don't smell almost any lavender reference here at all. Maybe somewhere on the background, but I, I can't really detect that. And added, again, the same, they're almost identical in that sense, the same synthetic, kind of like super cheap, flat, floral, undistinguishable essence. It's like, the flowers, you don't know what they are. Maybe this is rose. I don't think roses smell like that, but it's just very, yeah, I don't know. It lacks depth, it lacks complexity. And if you had, if I had to choose between the two, I would be hard pressed. They are very similar. To me, Rosa Pop is even less sweet and a little bit more, a little bit more rosy actually. This is, this smells more toward how real roses smell. This, I don't even know what that is. Uh, this is just still, it's way sweeter than Rosa Pop. It still has a lot of that sugary base, even though it's subdued compared to the classic Mon Guerlain. But what's the floral component there? It's very hard to tell because it's so far removed from any believable natural scent. So, Basically, you don't need both, that's for sure. If you want something a little bit sweeter, I would recommend you try the Bloom of Rose. If you do, do, do want to remove as much of the liquid sugar as, as possible from your summer routine, then maybe try Rose of Pop. But to be honest, there are so many beautiful rose colognes and eau de toilettes and eau de parfums that I see no reason to even look at these a second longer. So yes, I did hold them and I will give it a go. I've been already working on the Bloom of Rose, but to be honest, I've worn it probably five times and it's just joyless, completely joyless. It's as if I'm just deodor like using deodorant, I'm deodorizing my body. I'm not really, I don't feel like I'm using perfume at all. And the next three, are actually a surprise PR uh, package from a new, I think it's, uh, I don't want to call them niche, I think it's an indie brand, that's the, the right way to name it. The brand Alchemy, this is a very fresh brand on the market, uh, so basically homegrown, and they sent me three perfumes, 
hoping that I will mention them in my video. So here you go. Not sponsored, by the way. It's just a PR package. Uh, so I got three. The first one is Alchemy number 33. I'll tell you up front, I took the liberty of rearranging the bottle caps because I think the way that they styled them, um, there's work to be done there. Uh, stylistically, I think. So the number three, let's see. The marketing kind of sales pitch of Alchemy perfumes is that they try to make them in a very mindful and all this meditative way. Um, if you are digging that kind of story, pay them a visit, see what you like there. To be honest, um, I'm very, <laughs> by nature, because I worked in corporate product development for so many years, uh, <clears throat> I know <laughs> I know way too much about the marketing <laughs> of, of products uh, to people, so I'm, you know, I don't care how much people meditate on the product, just make a good product. That's all I'm asking for. Just make it good. I don't care how you, how you do it. <laughs> do you do it with soul, without soul, as long as it's a good thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm not deriving a lot of value from that, but I know that a lot of people do. So if you do, pay them, pay them a visit. They have a website, check them out. So the, the Alchemy 33, interesting name. Mysterious, right? Like it, it makes you think about like some kind of like numerology conspiracy theory. What does it mean? Why? Why is it 33 and not 46? That's a mystery. I find this to be, first of all, very light consistency. So I would say this is eau de toilette toward almost colognes. So something that is really to throw in and go. If you like body mists, hair mists, and that kind of things, you will find that uh, the Alchemy perfumes are suited for your needs. They are flowing light in the way that they present themselves in space. Yet, I wouldn't say that they are weak or, you know, not noticeable. They do have a little bit of a grab, a little bit of a zest in them. The number 33 to me is a smell of um, ginger ale. Not that it smells like ginger, but some kind of like soda, some like colorful, yummy soda drink. There's something about it that seems a little bit bubbly, a little bit sparkly, like sparkling water. I do like it. I'm not in love with it. And as I told you, I swapped the lids on, <laughs> on these bottles just because I am, I'm very picky when it comes to aesthetics of things that I own. So I found that for me, uh, this bottle works better with this, with this, with this cap. Yeah, but I do like it. I'm not sure if I if I'm in love with it. I'm not. I'm not a uh, huge fan of soda or bubble gum type of perfumes but if you like that kind of like flirty youthful almost juvenile bubbly presence the number 33 definitely has that the next one is actually my favorite uh, out of the three it's alchemy aqua i only born this a few times so these are mostly first impressions if you're curious we can talk about it in more detail in a future video. Again, warning you, I swapped the lids because I just think it looks better that way. So this is Alchemy Aqua. This I'm gonna use and abuse in the upcoming spring and summer. This is a perfect salty, bergamotty, fresh mist with a drop of gin. It's one of those, you know, I see a little bit bittery, refreshing, citrusy gin drink. So refreshing, so light, and yet I don't like when the citruses and perf perfumes get um, too grabby or too sour or too aggressive or too green. I do prefer more of like, it's kind of like a bergamotty and like aquatic, almost like a wind-like um, presence of aquatic perfumes. This is a beautiful aquatic perfume. I love it. Wonderful, wonderful scent. I, I'm gonna use and abuse it all summer. 
And the last one from Alchemy is Alchemy Gold. All right, let's see what this is about. Uh, across all of the three, I would say that this one definitely needs a repackaging because even though it's called gold and it has these um, kind of imitation of uh, metallic reflection, if I would rather stick with a monotone or actually make it gold, to be honest, because otherwise it looks cheapish. Uh, you know, like this printed imitation metallic rather than metallic itself. Um, and when it comes to the fragrance, to be honest, I expected something rich, ambery, maybe even resinous in many ways. But what we get here is, I would say just very elevated it's much lighter the alchemy gold is much lighter than what i anticipated so instead of being grounded and bass heavy it still sits on very high frequency it's almost light though it does have some substantiality to its base i can't even tell what it what i smell in here but I also can tell you, like, it's something, it's not too sweet, it's not too woody, it's not smoky at all, it's not umbery or vanilla-like at all. I would say this is just dry, woody, very well-tempered and light-sounding for woods. Like, this is a very, like, light, woody scent to me. There's something else in here. That so far I can't quite distinguish uh, but to be honest this is the least um, my least favorite out of the three so all the way through the packaging through the printing through the olfactory profile of it probably not not my cup of tea but again if you're looking you know what it reminds me of I think I know very in a very very kind of far removed way these are not clones by any means but a little bit of um, Jessica Parker stash. While Jessica Parker stash is rich, it's almost niche perfume. It has a lot of strong and multidimensional presence. It's really grabbing your skin. So if if an echo of that perfume could be created, it's somewhat somewhat referential i would say in a very very far removed way it kind of has an echo of jessica um, sarah jessica parker stash at least how i remember it i might be wrong i don't know this one definitely could be uh, transitioning way closer to unisex slash uh, men's perfume it has a little bit of this aftershave quality to it as time goes by uh but it's very delicate and modest I wouldn't say that it it's not wearable by women by any means all of these I think are unisex probably if I if I was pressed to call one of them feminine I would say the 33 because it's so bubbly in and kind of positive and kind of soda pop kind of thing then it's more feminine like more girly in that sense and since this gives me some references to classic Kind of woody aftershave fragrances scents then i would say the gold probably is the the most the closest to the mus the masculine sense but yet all of these are very light they they all exist on the very high frequency of they're all very headspace very light in their essence so i think i would need to wear them longer to really understand how they sound uh, in their bases. The service that I uh, absolutely adore and accidentally forgot to switch off <laughs> for my <laughs> for my no by year is Sandbird. I've very quickly migrated from one perfume uh, a month to three. Don't judge <laughs> because they have a absolutely divine selection of niche brands that I always wanted to try. 
So with Sandboard, again, not sponsored, but I do have a reference link for you. Like if you want to subscribe, I get one free um, decant and you do too. So if you, if you would like that deal, please click on the link that I supply below. Um, however, uh, they're not sponsoring any reviews from me. So this is just my honest opinion. I do like them be particularly because they try to bring on a lot of niche brands on board. And yet for those of us who prefer designer sense, there's like such a huge variety in selections. And a lot of the, for me, I'm mostly interested in niche brands there. A lot of those niche brands are just painfully expensive to buy blindly. And the fact that I can actually have a really decent size, which is eight milliliters to try Amouage, Montal, uh, what do we have here? Clive Christian. One bottle of Clive Christian costs like well over two fifty, maybe three hundred dollars. This this is crazy, right? Um, so to actually have an experience, actually, you can that that might be like those eight milliliters might be well enough for me to live with the perfume, to make an opinion, to enjoy it, and to say goodbye to it and to move on to something else. So I absolutely adore the concept of uh, the subscription boxes as long as you have a lot of choices and as long as you're you're given opportunity to try something truly of value i find that sandbird so far has the best value for your buck uh, because because of the brands that i mentioned so again here we go clive christian um clive christian rock rose this is not a rose perfume this is a, a particular flower that's called rock rose and i was fooled by the name i thought it was like gonna be like gothic or rocky i don't know gunpowder rose petals and i don't know maybe bourbon something like that actually not it's a completely different story it's a bit of a deceiving name maybe they deceived us intentionally i don't know what what i do find here and by the way they do supply you with cards and descriptions of the perfume so here we go clive christian incredibly expensive perfume that you can buy for 15 bucks rock rose here we have taroka orange rock rose as a flower saffron lavender and black pepper i love orange i love lavender i love black pepper and i was very curious about saffron and rock rose it does smell like a well-balanced warm spiciness kind of rounded up and softened by lavender with to me a, a kind of like dry herbal variety of scents so if i had to describe all of these exotic saffron and rock rose i would say that this to me smells like uh dried herbs there's something to it so it's not uh, lipstick like perfume it's not powdery in a sense it's spicy I would not call it gourmand at all but yet it's not sour and it's not bitter it's like herbal spicy perfume with a warm lavendery heart very good quality like it this is this is why I love Sandbird because there's no way on earth I would buy this perfume full price especially blindly and I don't have a lot of places where I can test Clive Christian love it will wear it more I think this will be something that is beautiful for August for you know for this like dying summer beginning of fall kind of weather mm. very interesting oh okay. okay another ultra expensive brand that you can try for $15 Roja Perfumes Creation E. Let's find the description. Here we go. Roja Creation E. Perfume Cologne. A swirl of cognac and tobacco, where scents of woods and leather per pervade. Warm touches of spice blend with so vanilla and benzoin, creating a sense of ambiguity nothing is quite what it seems oh really oh right mm -hmm. okay well good news it's not sickly sweet i was afraid because raja um, are known for making 
the outmost of outmost of any note. If they make a rose perfume, it's gonna be the thickest, oiliest, the most heaviest rose of all roses. If they make, you know, frangipani or like tropical fruits, it's gonna be so much of the fruits that you will drown in the in, in the sickly sweet juice of them. So the this brand is kind of like known for its extravagances of taking things to absolute max. And I'm happy to say this is actually a almost a like sophisticated and elegant perfume. It has an intriguing profile. This is the kind of thing when the you feel like the smell is constantly rotating, kind of picking a note here and there that kind of like takes you on this olfactory journey. You're constantly trying to like, what is it? What is it? To me, the overall impression is close to a tobacco leaf, you know, like a dried tobacco. That's how, that's how cigars sometimes smell. It's a, but comparative to that, it's softer, milder, probably because of vanilla. So we also have Rose de Mai, Heliotrope, Cognac, Tobacco, Vanilla. Oh, I like that the vanilla here is not dominating the fragrance. There are so many gorgeous, sweet, warm, cuddly vanilla fragrances, but you know, there's time and space for that. I don't want my van vanilla in any fragrance to completely ruin the party and just like bombard you with sweetness. This is definitely not the case here. To me, vanilla here just softens the edges of that tobacco, of that cognac. I'm not sure if I really smell cognac, but I guess could be. Mm incredible i really like it really like it ah oh, this is gonna be such a pleasure to wear and the last one which i already wore three times and i love it this is the best dried sunny dried fruits perfume in my collection it's better than serge lutin's arabi it's better than serge lutin's amber sultan it's better than my Burberry Black. It's better than all of them. It's so good, guys, it's so good. And I can't buy it online. I can't find it anywhere. This is Arquiste Anima Dulce. I hope I'm saying it correctly. So let me spray and read you the description. Oh, this is so yummy, so sweet. Oh, okay. November 1695, Mexico City. I wonder like what kind of people like come up with all of these like marketing, marketing story tales, but okay. Deep inside the holes of the Royal Convent of Jesus, Jesus Maria, a group of reverend nuns prepares a Baroque recipe of spiced cocoa. The brew is infused with an assortment of chilies that tempt rapture and the air is rich with the scent of exotic spices. After centuries of safekeeping within the closed world, their secrets are finally revealed to the senses. So the sort of the prominent notes in this perfume, which is again Arquiste uh, Animal Dulce, it's Cocoa Absolu, Mexican Vanilla, Cinnamon and Smoked chili infusion maybe they're right but what i smell here is a beautiful assortment of very juicy dried fruits you know dried prunes raisins apricots pears it's just it's so delicious it's the first scent that claims to have to have chocolate or cocoa powder that I love. For some reason, as, as much as I love cocoa powder in real life, I don't like in, in the perfumes, especially when, when they make it smell like Starbucks coffee shop. Not my, not, not my thing. <laughs> but here, it's so believable. 
so delicious. This is truly a next level of gourmands. I am dying for it. It's intoxicatingly sweet. I'm desperate. I really, really want to find a food bottle. I don't know how, I don't know where, but I need it in my life. Arkist is one of those niche brands that is hugely overlooked in my personal opinion in the makeup, oh, makeup, fragrance community. And I highly recommend that you get more familiar with it through services such as Sunbird, Perfume.com, and I think even FragranceNet.com now is testing their subscription, uh, decant subscription service. Beautiful stuff, amazing, love it. All right. This is all in terms of my spring fragrance haul. Uh, let me know if you have any impressions, advice, recommendations about the perfumes that I mentioned or notes or maybe olfactory profiles that you're also exploring. I'll be waiting for your comments and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.